Hello everyone! This tutorial is to guide you through a Jupyter notebook that accompanies this paper over here in Geothermics that I wrote together with several co-authors on stochastic inversion of gravity, magnetic, tracer, lithology, and fault data, five different data types that we use to create geologically realistic structural models based on real data from the Patua Geothermal Field in Nevada, the United States. So please go first and check out this paper. You can download it for the next two weeks. It's going to be for free. So please go ahead and do it. So a little bit more background that I'm going to show you here about what uh, the Jupyter Notebook is about. First of all, it is uh, taken from this uh, GitHub uh, project, Pinati Inversion. You can also uh, download for yourself and then uh, use it directly on your computer. So what what's going on here? We have five different data types. This is the gravity data, magnetic, tracer, uh, ground and top the fault markers. We want to take all these five different data types and then create geologically realistic models that respect these five different data types. And we can do this using the package. So I'm sure now you really want to run the package. So let's go and do it. So how do we do it? We go here to this cell in the Jupyter Notebook and we click on run. And then it runs the cell and you can see it because it says here five instead of having an asterisk. You know that the cell has run. Whenever you see an asterisk, it's still thinking about it. Next, what are we going to do? So we're going to think a little bit backwards here. First, I'm going to show you the results of using the package. What is an example geologic model that you can get after you run this whole inversion procedure? So you're going to go here and then click on Run. Now, I've already run this for you, so that's why I'm not clicking at the moment. And what you're going to get after you run it, and it'll take approximately one minute, so be relaxed, a little patient, you'll get this amazing geologic model. And what you see here is the topography, the Patua geothermal field. And what you see in blue are the different stratigraphic layers, and in these multicolors are the faults. Now you really want to see the faults, so how are you going to do that? Well, one way of doing it is to go here into controls, into clipping planes, and then planes, and then into add new. Clipping plane, and then from camera. And then when you do that, what's going to happen is that with your mouse, you can go and scroll in and out, and it will cut the model at the location that you're zooming in and out. And what's really nice about this is, for example, over here, I'm seeing this fault. I'm seeing the stratigraphy hitting the fault. And when the stratigraphy intersects uh, the fault, it's going to slip downwards because this is one of the benefits of this package is that it creates a balanced uh, geologic model where the stratigraphy is displaced uh, due to the presence of faults uh, in the model. And that is awesome. And we can also see the different wells and how they intersect the faults and hopefully then produce some uh, geothermal fluids. Well, there's also one other option. So first you're going to delete this clipping plane and I'm gonna close the controls here and go into objects. We can go into objects and then find where it says uh, fault surface or uh, land surface, sorry. And then you can go and change the opacity. And that lets you see a little bit closer inside and see the different faults and granitic intrusions. Or you can just completely turn it invisible. That's great. We can again see uh, the different faults in the system and all the different wells. We can also go and um, make some of the first top three meshes, make them invisible. Right, so I'm going to go here, remove one mesh, remove another mesh, and remove a third mesh. And now we can see only the faults, intrusions, and wells. And that's awesome. So that is uh, the result of running the inversion. So now I'm sure you really want to run the inversion yourself. So how do you do it? First thing, you have to choose the hyperparameters, and there are a lot of them. One of the most basic is uh, what optimization are you going to use? So the paper covers uh, four methods, um, MCMC, uh, genetic algorithms, non-dominated sorting genetic algorithms, and uh, annealing. So choose whatever method you want, and you put it here. And that's, for example, your first hyperparameters. How many faults do you want to have in the system? So I had 18, uh, and now you can choose maybe you want a, a lower number of faults. So you just click these, change all the different parameters as you'd like, and now you don't really have to change any of them. You can keep the defaults that I left. And you click on Run, of course, so that this uh, registers uh, within um, the system. And you go here and you run uh, the model. Now, I'm not going to run it for you because it will take a long time. I actually advise you, maybe when you first open this notebook, to go here into Kernel and then just uh, restart and run all. And uh, that will run all the cells for you. And then you while it's running, just go and take a chill pill, uh, do something for half an hour, drink coffee, go on a walk, and then come back and look at the results. So this is just a, a random simulation so that 
it's not great. You have to run many threads to get some good results. But we can see here, just let's take a look at the results a bit. We have the observed gravity, the simulated gravity, the mismatch between the observed and the simulated, and the mismatch preteration. We see it didn't do that great of a job, actually, uh, in reducing the gravity. Uh, the same goes for the granite top and magnetics. Then we have the simulated tracer and the observed tracer, and also the fault markings. And we can see here, uh, for example, is that it did a great job in reducing the error uh, for the tracer and for the fault markers from pretty high, around 400, to um, 200 in this scenario. They can run this many times, and probably uh, every time it can be either better or worse, but at some point it will be a pretty good model. Uh, another plot that we can see over here is the overall mismatch of the system. Maybe it started here around uh, 1, and then went down all the way to uh, 0 0.5. Uh, we can also see here uh, this line graph. Uh, which shows you, for example, that the granite top was once uh, kind of high, and then it uh, went lower, and we can see that uh, for the different systems uh, in this um, in this single thread of the model. So you can go and run this yourself. Uh, also, if you want to have a better inversion on the gravity, one of the things that we found is that you can go and run it just for the gravity data, and then the gravity will converge when it's running on its own. So the way to do that is you would go uh, over here, and then data types, you would just kind of remove all of these, and you can run it just for the gravity data. And then you'll see better results for the gravity. Awesome! So let's say you run this, what will you get? Then it will automatically create for you uh, this little GIF that shows you the reversion. So like I said, go go relax and then come. When you return, it will show you a GIF of how um, the different faults uh, move around, as well as the different densities in the model. And uh, as um, <coughs> the perturbations take place, uh, the model uh, improves. So that's it. I'm going to look at this a little more carefully. We can see the granite top is changing with time. It's pretty awesome. And after you do that, you can plot in 3D uh, the results of this uh, model that you just created. And it's going to be unique because this is, is a stochastic process. And uh, what we do here actually is we find the model with the least errors. It's going to go through the files, read them in, get the errors. It's going to determine what the best... Uh, what's called a history file, uh, which shows the history of the different displacements. Uh, and then you can plot it in 3D. So this is, for example, initially when you get it, it might look like this, a little bit disorganized. So try to look here at this bar and try to rotate it as appropriate so X and Y looks normal. And this will be the, your resulting model. And that's it. You have gone through this tutorial. Now let's say you really like this and you want to go and adapt this for your project. Right now, there's a few things that are a little bit hard-coded for the Pachua Geothermal Field, but I'll be really happy to help you if you would like to uh, use this uh, for your own geothermal field where you have a nice set of data. Uh, so just ping me. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, write me a message, and I'll be really happy to help. You can also uh, write a question here inside uh, the GitHub. You can go and open an issue, and I'll uh, be happy to help. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and have a great day.